All right guys, so today we're gonna look at a watershed, what a watershed is and what makes up a watershed. So what is a watershed? A watershed is an area of land that is drained by a river system. So water is draining into a specific area like a lake or an ocean. So think of any large area of land and the water that's found on that land needs to go somewhere and that is your watershed. So at the very tip top of the watershed, we have divides and headwaters. So watersheds are separated from one another by the highest points of elevation. So we call these high points a divide. And divides are commonly the ridges that will have the water drain into two separate watersheds. So if you think of the word shed, most people think of a utility shed. And at the top of a utility shed is a roof. Now, if you know what a roof looks like, most roofs in like where we live are pointed, so it kind of looks like a triangle. And when it rains, that rain is going to go on either side. And that high point is what's separating which direction the rain is going to fall. So that will be called our divide. So think of our ridge lines and the mountaintops as that like high point on our roof. And it's telling, where the, telling which way the water is going to go. So headwaters are waters found at the highest elevation of a watershed. And these waters flow down to the lower parts of the watershed. Um, headwaters can be lakes, glaciers, underground springs, or even precipitation from high altitudes. So simply a, a headwater, like your head's at the top, is just where the water starts. So a watershed is made up of a lot of tributaries and rivers. So just as a reminder, a tributary is a small stream that flows into a larger stream of water. And that larger stream of water is usually a river. So a river is the main stream of water that most tributaries feed into. And the, the river will eventually feed into a larger body of water like a lake or an ocean. And when you put all these together, that makes it a river system. And that's the drainage of water into a larger body of water. So like the ocean or the lake. And if you look at this diagram, we have the river source. So you have those mountains and the top of the mountains would be your divide or the ridge line, and then where the um, tributaries and stuff are starting, that will be your headwater, and you can see the tributaries are flowing to a main river, and along our main river is that floodplain, so that um, it's like a flat area of land, and you can see it's meandering or twisting and turning, and eventually it goes past some wetlands, and there's the river mouth, which will make it empty into a larger body of water, like a lake or an ocean. So floodplains. Along the side of many riverbanks are large flat areas that water spills over when the water levels are high. And this can happen from like heavy precipitation or even like in the spring when snow melts. And as the water flows, it carries sediment along with it and deposits the sediment along the sides. So as the flow or the speed of the water decreases, the amount of sediment it carries with it will also decrease. So think of it like flowing water when flowing water is moving really fast. Like when we talked about like erosion and like how force like helps break the rocks down. When water moves fast, it's going to be picking up all these rocks and the dirt and that sediment. And as it starts to slow down, that sediment starts to fall. And we kind of see more clear water. So it's not going to be carrying as much sediment as it goes slow. So we have two diagrams here, normal conditions and flood conditions. So on the left here, we have normal conditions and you can see there's the floodplain, it's a nice light green flat area, and our little meandering river. And the floodplain's nice and flat, the river's not flooding, so this is what it would normally look like. Now in flood conditions, the river's going to overflow and it's going to fill up this nice flat area. And then we have like little hills on each side. Now eventually a uh, watershed well, the water's going to run into wetlands and estuaries. So these are two different things that you should remember. And a wetland is an area of land that is soaked with water for the least part of a year. Um, so for most of the year, it's going to be wet. So there are many kinds of wetlands like bogs and marshes and swamps. An estuary is where all the water in the watershed eventually makes its way to the ocean or the bay. And an ocean is super salty. So an estuary is where Fresh water from our river is going to mix with the salt water from the ocean. And we usually find wetlands along the estuaries, but the thing to remember that's different is that the estuary is where the salt water and the fresh water is mixing, where a wetland is just any area of land that's wet. So when you put this all together, that's what makes up the watersheds. So the water in an area of land that is drained to a large collective body of water 
is making up the watershed. So you start from the top where our divide made of ridge lines and mountaintops, and the water is going to move down through tributaries and rivers, through our floodplains, through wetlands and estuaries, and then eventually making its way out to a larger body of water, like a lake, and that lake will eventually make its way out to the ocean. Unless it's like an inland lake, then it's not, but don't worry about that. Eventually, all water is going to make its way out to the ocean. So we in Woodbridge and the state of Virginia, we're part of the Chesapeake Bay watershed. And this watershed's really big. It contains six states around us. And that Chesapeake Bay area is what feeds out into the Atlantic Ocean. So for your homework tonight, you just need to use the diagram that I handed out in class and see if you can fill out the different parts of the watershed. And then tomorrow we'll go over your answers and make sure that you have all those correct.